Hello and welcome to some tips and the tutorial of 885 microprocessor. Today in this video I will give you the timing diagram of memory read and input output read, memory write and input output write. If you have not watched my previous timing diagram video of upcode phase, I have given the link in the card. You can check it from there and before watching this video I recommend you to watch this my previous timing diagram video because in this video I have discussed all about the bar and the signals of the diagram very elaborately. Subscribe to some tips and hit the bell icon and get notification of new videos from some tips. So as I already said I will cover 4 timing diagrams memory read, input output read, memory write and input output write in the video. So watch this video till the end to watch this 4 timing diagrams in single video. So first of all I will discuss you all the memory read timing diagram of the 885 microprocessor and watch this memory read timing diagram very carefully because after this rest of the 3 timing diagrams will be like 80% same according to the first timing diagram so let's start with the memory read timing diagram so here it is the first line is our clock or the t state and one thing you have to remember memory read input output read memory write and input output write this three timing diag four timing diagram has three t states so these three tests t states will be the same for all of the timing diagram in the video so next is about the ale address latch enable you already know in the previous timing diagram of opcode phase the ALE is the half of the first t state is active and then it is low so here it same thing will be there on the first ALE on the first half of the t state will be active rest of the time it is low next it AD0 to AD7 so here it is first of all A0 to A7 that's mean the address will be accessed then the D0 to D7 data will be accessed so in the first phase of the t states the address have been accessed then the half of the second and half of the third t state data have been accessed quite similar to the of code phase if you have understand of code phase timing diagram it is very easy to understand for you next is the a to a it is also the same like of code phase here the half of the first t state is it is started from active half of the first t states is taken to active and only the address will be accessed the higher order address next is the rd bar this is the new on the read bar here it is the it is a active low signal where it will be low when the data have been accessed or the data have been read in from the memory that it is the mem memory read cycle so it will be low when the D0 or D7 is active. So that's why it is low when the D0 or D7 is active or the data has been accessed. And remember one thing the memory read cycle is a kind of operation where the accumulator value will be returned to a specific memory location from accumulator. The data will be returned. Next is the IOS plus M bar and here it is the IOS plus M bar already discussed that input output or the memory operation. So here as it is the memory operation the data will be written to a specific memory location the input output bar it will be a low or is a zero. If the input output is active then it will be one. So as it is a memory operation it will be zero all of the time. So next is a zero or S1. So as I already discussed in my previous video that status signal over to d0 s1 3 4 combination is there let's check out my previous of code phase video i have discussed so here it is the s1 will be 1 and s0 will be 0 for the memory read operation and that's completes my first timing diagram of memory read next i am going for a input output read for the input output read all the things will be same only the IO slash M bar will be changed so because it is in IO will be activated so it will be 1 and rest of the thing will be same as the memory read so only input output read IO slash M bar will be changed from 0 to 1 and rest of the thing is same now the next uh, I am going to IO write or input output port write so before that I am going to say what is the IO option will work it will take the address 
when the IO read this operation is going on, it will take the value from the input output port instead of the memory location. So here it will be the address of the input output port instead of the memory location address. So next I'm going to memory IO write. So in the IO write two words will be changed and S0 S1 will be changed, but as it is the IO operation, input output operation is going on, so it will stay one. But the S0 and S1 will be changed. So here after change it will be a zero will be one and S1 will be zero and our read bar will be right bar. So right bar is also an active signal, active low signal when the data is being written that will be low. So that's why when the D0 D7 data is being written, the right bar or the RF lower bar is low. Next I have now covered three of the timing diagram so what i have covered memory read input output read and input output write now i'm going to go to the last timing diagram that is memory write so for the memory write again the last one thing will be changed that is input output or m bar so again it will turn to zero because the memory operation is going on so that's it the memory operation is now i am io slash m is now zero that's why it is now this diagram is for memory write so i have covered four timing diagrams in this video if you found this video helpful like this video share this video and comment if you have any query and if you want more timing diagrams in the near future and stay subscribed to some test because i'll be giving you more timing diagrams and 885 microprocessor programming very soon thanks for watching